everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to Celebrate Sausage, a series sponsored by The Sausage Maker. Be sure to get all your sausage making supplies by clicking on the link in the description box below. In today's episode, we're going to be making an Austrian delicacy known as Käsekräner. Käsekräner literally translates to cheese sausage. And this Swiss cheese stuffed sausage, once prepared, is then smoked for several hours to give it an extra boost of flavor. It's absolutely delicious. Let me show you how to make it. Let's make the legendary Vienna Käsekräner. Welcome to your daily dose of sausage. We will be using 29 at 32 millimeter hog casings. And while you could use whatever casings you have on hand, this is more traditionally a smaller diameter. 2932 is perfect. We are going to rinse the salt off the casings and flush them out before we soak them. And so I'm just going to do this in some nice cold water. You could do this in your sink under some running water under the faucet. And that makes the job a whole lot easier. So we're going to place that into some nice cold water. It's been cleaned and flushed. And I'm just going to add a touch of baking soda to the water. This alkalinizes the water, which in turn will lubricate the casing, making it very easy to undo knots, slip on and off your sausage horn, and basically eliminate casing blowout. So this is going to go into the refrigerator. I'm going to let this hydrate overnight, and we'll get back to that tomorrow. It is now tomorrow, and look at that. This is what we get to work with today. We've got back fat, lean beef, pork shoulder, and Swiss cheese. I am already salivating over this sausage. We're going to chop this up into pieces that are small enough to fit into our grinder. So if you have a small grinder, cut everything up into small pieces. If you have a large grinder, like a 22 or a 32, you could do chunks or even strips. All that will be fine. Our pork, our beef, and our fat will all be ground together. And then we're going to keep our cheese separate. Now you can cut this up any way you want. I like to cut relatively small cubes for my Swiss cheese because I feel like it's more evenly distributed through this sausage and I want cheese in every bite. And you may be asking, do you need high temp cheese for this sausage? And the answer is no. We're using fresh Swiss cheese and you'll see the end result once we're finished. But if you want to use high temp cheese, that is not a problem. The meat will go in the freezer. The cheese will go in the refrigerator. Let's look at our spices. We've got salt, We've got cure number one. I'm also going to be adding some garlic powder and some black pepper. Check the description box below for the full-blown recipe. We've got smoked paprika, coriander, and that is it. This is a very aromatic spice blend. It's time to grind our meat. Let's check the temperature. Under 34 degrees is what we're looking for. Absolutely perfect. 30, that's kind of what I'm loving. That's going to give us a really nice, clean grind. Wow, this is going to be great. All right, let's grind this up on a six millimeter plate. That is a pretty grind. Fat is still intact, nice and loose. If the temperature of the meat has risen too much, you're going to want to rechill it. I want mine to be under 34. And as you can see right here, absolutely perfect. We're still very cold. So we're just going to go ahead and take this meat and mix it. There is no need to rechill. Into the mixer bowl we go. We're using a KitchenAid for this because we're making such a small amount. And we're going to add our spices. The liquid I'm going to be adding is heavy cream, and you can add whatever liquid you want, but I think cream is going to add a lovely richness, a lovely body to this sausage, and I think it'll go great with that Swiss cheese. So let's go ahead and just mix this up, and we want to mix this until it's very sticky, very tacky. Notice that our cheese has not been added yet. We're going to add that at the very end once we're done, and with this particular KitchenAid, I want to say that we only mixed for maybe two minutes max. And the batter was nice and sticky, just like that. So we're now going to add our cheese. And because our batter is nice and sticky, all we're doing is mixing this to incorporate the cheese. So another 10 seconds, 20 seconds, that cheese is incorporated, and we can now get it into its casing. Nothing special about stuffing this sausage. We do want to pack that meat into our stuffer nice and tight, just to minimize any air pockets. These are the casings that we're going to be using. They've been in our fridge overnight. And we just pulled them out here a second ago. So they are nice and tender. Let's get that meat into its stuffer and pack it down in there. And all we're going to do here is lubricate the horn and add a little bit of water to the head of that casing. That's going to help 
slide it on very nice and easy. And you can see here with the addition of that baking soda, look at this, it just comes on with no problem. Once the casing's on your horn, you should be able to slide it front and back with no issues. If you can't, you might want to re-lubricate or scale down the size of your stuffing horn. All right, let's go ahead and get this stuffed into its casing. <laughs> Now that our sausage is stuffed, it's time to link. I'm going to find just a little scratch mark on this tray, and that's going to be my link mark. And I'm going to do three twists forward. And with this particular technique of linking your sausage, we're going to skip every other link. So this link we're going to skip. We're not going to twist it. This link we're going to twist three times forward. So every other link you're going to twist three times forward. And now you're going to have nice, tight links. So next, we're going to prick our sausage. This is going to get rid of any air pockets and allow that casing to adhere to the meat better, which is going to give us a nice, snappy bite. Let's pop this on a tray. We're going to put this in our refrigerator overnight. This is going to allow those flavors to come together. It's going to allow that casing to dry up. Our cure is going to get a chance to do its job. And tomorrow, we're going to cook these nice and slow with a little applewood smoke. All right, it's now the next day. It's time to smoke our sausages. And what I like to do is place these into my smoker with the door slightly open at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to leave them in there for an hour and a half. So I've got it set to 100. An hour and a half later, we're going to give them a check. And what we're trying to do here is just dry those sausages out. When it comes out of the fridge, condensation will build up on the sausages, and they won't really take on smoke so well. So they do feel dry to the touch. I'm now going to start applying smoke. I like using a cold smoke generator for this because I can apply smoke at a much lower temperature. We're basically going to start applying smoke at about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. We're using a cold smoke generator and a digital smoker from Smoking It Smokers. This digital smoker allows you to preset the times and the temperatures, and it takes care of everything for you. So let's take a peek at that. 100 for an hour and a half, that's the drying phase. 125 for an hour and a half, that's where we started smoke. 155 for an hour, and all this is happening automatically. 175, and then we finish off at... 200 until we get to 145 internally. Now that 145 internal is important because we don't want to cook it too hot. Otherwise that cheese could melt out all over the place. So I like to stop at about 145. That's absolutely perfect for this sausage. We're going to go ahead and place them in some cool water. And we are just basically trying to shock them and stop that cooking process. That's going to keep those casings from shriveling up. And check these out. This is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful color. Took on smoke really well. Great marbling of Swiss cheese throughout. Once these have cooled down, I'm going to go ahead and place them on a drying rack. And that's just going to hang out right there at room temperature for a couple hours. This particular step is known as blooming. That's just going to help enhance the color. It does nothing for the flavor. And once you're done here, you can go ahead and refrigerate your sausages. You can freeze them. They freeze great. Or you can heat one back up and go ahead and enjoy it, which is exactly what we're going to do. Let's eat one of these. Our casing container is ready, and I am looking forward to this bite. This looks absolutely gorgeous. Cheese oozing out all over the place, super juicy, nice looking casing. Wow. <laughs> Let's give it a taste. Mm. <laughs> the mouthfeel that this sausage has is incredible. I mean, the Swiss element gives it this beautiful creaminess. I'm going to take another bite. Ah, oh, that's delicious. The texture is perfect. The spices are balanced. It's beautifully smoked. And I hope you get a chance to make this sausage. If you have any questions about this sausage, leave them in the description box below. And if you like this video or got something out of it, a thumbs up is always helpful. If you're new to this channel, take a moment. Click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. We're going to have a playlist at the end of this video that will get you caught up with all of season three 
celebrate sausage. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.